storm will come. One day, life's challenges will hit them hard. One day, that house will be shaken. And if the foundation is not Christ, it will not stand. He said, great will be the fall of the house. It doesn't matter how great the house is, if it's not founded upon Christ, it cannot stand. We need to quit justifying our position to God and stand upon Christ. See, we're really good at, at telling God who we are and, 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 you know, and, and ignoring who He is. Amen. We do. We, 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 when God comes knocking on our door, the first thing we say is, well, God, I've been saved. I am a Christian. I go to church. Or we start, just like the little lady did, she tried to defend herself. You know, we worship here. The Jews worship there. He said, it won't be long. You're not going to worship God in any way but the spirit and truth. Amen. He said, you're not going to worship me in this mountain or that mountain or anywhere else. He said, you're going to have to really love to worship God because you're not going to worship him openly. In other words, the time's coming when if you don't really love God enough to give your life for him, then you won't serve him. You know, right now, Christianity is still pretty popular, but it's under attack every day in our nation. It's slowly being rooted out of our society. And we wonder what the issues, what's causing people to go crazy and kill other people and do, and do bad things. I'm going to tell you, it's the lack of Christ. It's the lack of the Ten Commandments. It's the lack of the teachings of Christ. He said, I didn't come to change the commandments and make it okay for you to live however you want. He said, I came to fulfill them in your life. He said, and when I fulfill them, the Old Testament is just a rev- uh, is, the New Testament is just a revelation of the Old Testament. That's all it is. It really is simple. But we, and, and, and let, me, let me tell you something. If you don't accept Christ and you're not living under the grace of God, then you're living under the law of God. And no man can bear the law. What that means is this. If you're not living under grace, the new covenant, then you're living under the old covenant because there's only two covenants. There's not a third covenant that makes it easier for you. There's the new covenant and the old covenant. And the revelation of the new covenant is completely directly right out of the old covenant. Jesus fulfilled it. Now, when he fulfilled the law, what that means is this. He paid redemption's price for you and me. He fulfilled the demand. The law stood before God and cried out for justice, and Jesus Christ brought justice. He balanced the, the, uh, the sins of man so that we could return to the glory of his presence. That's what it is. He redeemed us to stand in the presence of God once again. Now see, as Christians, we want to gather once a week to get our issues straightened out. Well, or maybe every other week. Maybe once a month. Amen? See, but if you would have been with God in the beginning, every day, every day, at, in, at the end of the day, in the cool of the evening, the Word of God came walking through the garden. And, and so, you know, when you heard God call your name, calling Adam, he called him by name. When, when God called for Adam, Adam knew he had about 1.5 seconds to get it right. You say, well, but Adam was without sin. Well, Adam was without the knowledge of sin. He was like a child. Did he make mistakes? I don't know. Did he have an argument with Eve every now and then? Probably. There was nobody else to argue with. It was paradise. But I guarantee you, each day God came down and taught them like they were his children. He settled their issues every day. And that's what made it paradise. You weren't you wasn't allowed to walk around mad for a month in the Garden of Eden? Angry at one another? There wasn't anybody else to talk to but the animals. And I don't believe they talked back. So God come down and he worked everything out every day in the life of Adam and Eve in paradise so that he could keep them in paradise. See, that's all God wants to do in your life is come down and spend time with you every day and work out your issues so you can live in paradise. God's never changed his mind 
about where he wanted man. He wanted him in a garden paradise where it was beautiful and peaceful and wonderful, living and ruling and reigning and working and serving and doing. That's it. But we want to run off and build some other kingdom somewhere else. Let me tell you a secret. Whatever you're doing in your life here, you're building something else. You don't realize it unless God allows you to see it. Now, let me clarify that. If you're living a bad life here and you're hurting others and you're causing pain and you're, and you're just in sin all the time, you are empowering the kingdom of darkness in our world. Okay? Now, if you're, if you're a good person and you're doing good and you're serving others and you're loving people with the heart of God, you are building a kingdom that will last forever. And, and, and every now and then, God, in, in a vision or in a dream or by word or by something, will open up that kingdom and he will show you what the goodness of the Lord is actually building in your life for all eternity. He said, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not true, I would have told you so. See, he's saying, whatever you're doing here, you're building something in God's kingdom. You're doing good. You're, you're building something. Abraham knew it. He knew it so much that he went out into the middle of a desert and began to walk around and look for it. He was hungry for the kingdom of God. He was thirsty for something else. He said, this everyday, mundane, idol-worshiping life isn't going to serve me, and I'm not going to serve it. He said, I'd rather walk through the deserts with God than I had to stay in a society with evil. So he separated himself and he came out from the land of his fathers and he began to walk in a land of promise that his father had given him. And it's time that the church would step out of this world one more time and walk in the direction and in the directive of God where we could do something to bring glory to our father's name. See, that old line church, they believe in sanctification. That means separation. That means to come out from among everything that's going on and simply, I think they missed it. I think they missed the part about paradise. When you separate yourself to God, it ought to be a time of great blessing and presence. See, but we want to we make Jesus something he's not. He is the king of peace, the king of Jerusalem. He will establish Jerusalem. He is the king Lord of lords. He is the Lord and conqueror of death. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. And if you're alive and you're breathing this morning, then he can fix whatever's wrong in your life because you're not dead. And if you were dead, he could fix that too. You see, there's nothing... When you conquer death and hell and the grave, there's really nothing left. Everything else is just something we got to walk through on our way and on our journey to be with God. He is also the Lion of Judah. He is the warrior of worship. He's the defender of God's praise. And he is jealous for God. God is our Father. See, when you begin to look at this this morning, and you go over to Revelation chapter 5, verse 12, it said, with a loud voice, the angels round about the throne, the beasts, the elders, and thousands upon thousands, millions upon millions, begin to declare that the lamb that was slain was worthy to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Not only that, all the creatures of the earth begin to bow down and worship him and declare his glory. If we will simply begin to declare the glory of God and let Jesus be who he wants to be in our life, the world will notice that there's something going on in our life and we're different. We're walking down a different path and the blessings of God are overtaking us and the peace of the Lord is upon us. The healing grace of God is flowing in our bodies. We won't be the ones that are dying with our issues, bleeding out somewhere in a hospital. We'll be the ones that are walking in perfect health through the middle of the desert. Wherever God calls you to walk, God will give you the power to walk through it. See, we're a people of faith. 
I can't walk by what I see. I can't walk by what I hear because the doctors tell me one thing and God's Word tells me something else. I'm going to go with the Word of the Lord that shall endure forever. It will stand the test of time. It will prevail upon the vain imaginations of men. If we will only give our hearts to Christ and give our life to Christ, you will be amazed what God will do with you. See, we sung the song this morning. I'm amazed by you. But how many of you have had God do something amazing in your life lately? I'm talking about something real. I'm talking about something that you don't even understand how God made it happen. You were just praying and walking in faith and believing, and, and it was all messed up, and all of a sudden it got fixed. But wait a minute. It didn't just get fixed. It got really good fixed. You know what I mean? It got right and tight. You see what I mean? It didn't, just, it just, it didn't, didn't get better. It got right. God don't make things better. He makes them right. He'll make things better while you're going through it. But when he finishes it, it's right. And that's what we call justice. See, God, God hears your cry. He hears your prayers. And, and we pray and we pray and we pray and we just give up. We just give up, and we quit, and, 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 and God answers our prayer, and we don't even praise him because we don't even see it as an answered prayer. We forgot we prayed it five years ago, and God sits up there and goes, you know it took me five years to line that blessing up for them, and they didn't even give me the credit for it. You know what I mean? They prayed, I answered the prayer, and they didn't worship me. You see what I'm saying? You pray. When you pray, you've got to believe that it's actually going to happen. Regardless of the time and space it takes for God to make it happen. Because God's not just making it good for you. He's making it good for everybody. Does that make sense? He said, I'm going to make all things work for the good of them, not the good of you. For the good of them that are called according to his purpose. So them may be a thousand, them may be a million, them may be several hundred, or it might just be your neighbor. I don't know. But whoever them is, God's got to fix all of them so he can bless you. That's right. That's right. See, there's a lot of people that are, that are just, they don't get it. I don't know if they'll ever get it. I pray that they do get it. But, you know, at some point, you got to meet Jesus. And, and you got to decide who you're going to let him be in your life. And if you're going to let him be the Lord, if everybody that walked up and called Jesus Lord got their need met. He might not have. We looked at um, the little man in the tree, Zacchaeus, last week. And, 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 and he, he come to Jesus and he, the first thing he did when Jesus recognized who he was, he recognized who Jesus was. And he called him Lord. And when he called him Lord, Zacchaeus began to talk about the things he was going to do and everything he did that day when he met Jesus. He did all that. And Jesus said, because you have made me Lord, he said, salvation has come to this house. He was, to, to the Jew, how many of you's best friend is a tax collector? We love the tax club. You hang out with the IRS, don't you? I bet you have dinner with them every week. Talk about how good they are and tell them about Jesus. Hey, man, you just love to see them come. You get that stuff in the mail, they want your money. You just, you just send them a letter thanking them and praising God. But you've got to pay your taxes every year, don't you? I guarantee you, yeah. See, that's who Jesus saved, was the guy that nobody liked. The Jew hated him. He was a Roman tax collector, and he was a Jew. You couldn't get any worse than that to them. Maybe the Samaritan woman at the well who was a half Jew and half Greek was just a little bit lower than him, but not much. But Jesus met and saved both of them. When, he, when they received him as Lord, he became their Lord. Until you receive Jesus as Lord, he's not your Lord. See, we think about 1970 and 80 or something, where we had a cold chill up our back in a church service, and that was the Lord. He's more than that. Amen. He's more than a Holy Ghost head rush and falling out on the floor and speaking in tongues. He's more than that. 
He's a lot more than that. You see, when Jesus comes into our lives, here, here's the catch. He said, don't call me Lord if you're not going to do what I say. He said, because I'm not your Lord. He said, if I'm your Lord, then you will do what I'm telling you to do. 